Today on Be Something Wonderful, manifest it now. This is not a drill. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video this morning. Now, I'm going to talk about a, my client that manifested a phone call. And, and what she would say, a very unlikely phone call, right, from her specific person or client. But remember, this really, this lesson, like all lessons, is much bigger than that. This is really a blueprint for manifesting anything. So I want, I want to talk about, because these are some of the points that we, when we had our follow-up session yesterday that came out, and now she's excited to really manifest anything. So what was going on? Remember, so she sends me, how we got in contact, she sent me an email, email and said, Tom, this is not, Tom, this is not a drill, he called. That's all she said, and then, then she had the session booked. So I want to talk about the, this, a little bit of the background of the situation, but really about how it happened, what state that she got into, what she was embodying to, to be in that state or be that version of herself where he called. In this situation, she had been seeing this guy. They'd been seeing each other. Both of them had just got out of a, a, a kind of a long, difficult relationship. And, and both of them were really unsure. It's, they were pretty sure they didn't want to be in that other relationship, but they were uncertain about diving in to another one. And, and this, of course, she had, and her concerns were actually much bigger. Right, she wanted to be with him, but that did manifest in him saying, you know, maybe we should wait, right? And, and when they met, I just want to point this out, when they met, when they met, it was immediate chemistry. It was immediate, they were, they were I mean, they, they were head over heels over each other. But then this, this is what manifested in the, in the weeks, in the few weeks that they were seeing each other. Maybe we should wait. And then she had not heard from him. She didn't want to make, she, you know, she's a reality creator. She knows this stuff. She didn't want to have to make a move. But what happened then, after several weeks of no contact, he called. And I'm going to lead up to how that happened. She was really trying to manifest just a text from him or to, to, to receive a text because that's how they usually communicated. Other than when they first started going out, there were, there were a few phone calls. And she remembers even this, that, that she gave him a card with her phone number on it. And because the chemistry was so strong with him, she was just flirting right from the beginning, saying, don't lose this or you'll lose me. So I'm gonna, that's the background. So let's hit it. Hit some of the things that we, we really laid the groundwork. Because when we had talked, we talked a few times, she just wasn't feeling the love and the gratitude of being that person for whom and through whom that reality was already real. That's the first thing we had talked about. And then we talked a little bit, she said she was sort of struggling, in her words, with the imaginal scene. And I'm gonna talk about how we moved into that, how she could move into that imaginal scene without, she just felt like she, she, she couldn't dive just right into it. And, and so these are, the kind of, these are kind of the background points that I wanna, that I wanna pull out as we talk about this. So she says, Tom, this is not a drill, he called. Here are, some, here are some three pillars, really, to manifesting, to manifesting anything that we talked about. First of all, you want to move, you want to get to that sort of neutral state, that I am state of love, meaning neutral, meaning you're not conditioning it, right? It implies the conviction of being, a state of gratitude and love. It's natural, right? It's your I am dwelling place. It, it implies it is done, but you're not putting, you're not, you're not worried about the desire. You're just enjoying that I amness, right? This could be just an alpha state meditation. The alpha state meaning you're just relaxing your entire body, you're relaxing everything, closing your eyes and feeling that I amness. So this is what she had been doing recently, right? And, and then remember, we hit this idea that nothing is ever manifested in the future. It all happens now. As we had started talking, it really became clear that she was trying to manifest a text in the future. She wasn't feeling the gratitude of being that I am place in the present. 
the love and gratitude of just I am. She was feeling the anxiety, right? And the worry about what, will he text me? Will I get this? Will this happen in the future? And then the third point, these third sort of pillar to manifesting anything, she, she, she was still trying to hold on to um, how did, you know, you know, why did I ever agree to, um, uh, to take some time off? All of this, right? She's sort of kicking herself for letting it go and, and, and all of those things for letting him go because she feels like that if she just said we should try to work it out that they'd still be together. I said, you got to let all that go. Hold on to nothing. That has nothing to do with it, right? Those are just assumptions that you can let go, right? Don't hold on to the thought of it. Rather, embody the experience of fulfillment. Drop the seed and let it be. It's a reality. So she was just holding on to the thought of, oh, he, he's got to text me. I want him to text me. This is my desire, right? Rather than that, drop it. Just focus. Move to the experience of that fulfillment. The experience of that I am. These are the three pillars we talked about. So let's kind of hit this. Remember, before Abraham... I am, before conditions, before limitations, before separation, there's this unity, wholeness, and fulfillment. There's just that pure I amness, I am that I am. This is really what we move to. Remember, the idea that, that she, was, she was not feeling the gratitude, she's not feeling the love of just being in that state of I am that I am. I am who I am. Of course, People love me. Of course I can have whatever I want. It's all mine already. And then remember, nothing's ever manifested in the future. It's all now. So she really moved to, as she imagined her wish fulfilled, as she imagined him call, uh, texting her, because that's what she was working with. But we even let that go. I said, just imagine yourself talking to him. Either, whether it's through a text or a phone call, just let that go right now, right? Nothing is ever manifested in the future. It all happens now. And then this idea of hold on to nothing, don't hold on to the thought of it. She's really holding that thought and that desire of being back with him, of him contacting her in her grasp. Instead, just hold on to the experience. What would that experience be like? What would the conviction that you would feel within if you were together again? talking, having that experience. Those were the three pillars. And then let it be, right? Drop the seed. It's now reality. Those are the three things. And so before Abraham, I am, this means before conditions, before limitations, before conditioning anything, before separation, there's this unity and wholeness of fulfillment. Pure, full, I am. I am that I am. As we talked about uh, the client, Mike, I went full, I am. It's fullness. It's I am, right? It's indifferent. It's pure positive potential to be anything, yet it's no thing. This is that pure I am state. This is your natural state, right? You don't need anything to be that. You don't need anything to have that conviction. When you say I am, no one can say to you, no one on the planet can say you are not. This is really what we got to. You're not identifying with any specific reality or version of yourself, but rather in a state of love and gratitude for all realities and versions. You're in a state of grace. This is almost like a first step that we moved her to, right? Getting into that state, feeling that gratitude, but, but deeper, not the, not the temporary 3D emotions, but really a sense of peace and gratitude for that I amness. So some uh, teachers call that zero point, right? The I amness, that pure, that pure zero point of I am, right? That, start, that starting point of before Abraham, I am. Before everything, before conditioning it, before asking for things, before manifesting anything, you are just I am. So that's what we move to, right? And then you don't have to let go of anything. When we talked about this idea of letting go, another pillar of anything, the old your reality because you're not holding on to anything. So when you get into that state, you're not really letting go of anything because you're not holding on to anything. This is really, she was having a hard time letting go, but if you move to that pure awareness, that pure gratitude, that pure love of I am, by, by simply, simply moving in, relaxing, right? Getting in that total state of relaxation and just resting in that, then you're not letting go of anything. You're not, because you're not holding on to anything, 
right? Here, you're not desiring or resisting. You're not wanting or rejecting. You're just being who you are. That's what some spiritual teachers call the zero point that I am. That's what we moved into. That's what we moved into as that first step, right? From here, you imagine and then, and then you create your imaginal scene. So after we get in there, we cre create the scene. But here's the thing. She was really struggling with that. And so I said, just, just from that I am this, you're going to receive, allow and receive the desired reality. See yourself in that scene, whatever that scene is, at first, right? Don't put yourself in the scene at first because she was having a hard time with imagining. I just see yourself happy. See yourself, see yourself in that fulfillment, right? See, assume this new image or reality. So here, so notice what I'm saying to her is just see that new reality. See that new version of yourself. Then enter the scene. We've talked about this in early videos that some of the spiritual teachers talk about. This is one way to, so when you're struggling to imagine and step into immediately the scene of being, of seeing through the eyes of that imaginal you or seeing through the eyes of that new version of yourself or that new reality, that instead start with just seeing the scene from that I am state, seeing yourself happy, seeing yourself fulfilled, seeing yourself with him, sure, right? There's no resistance to that. You're seeing that new reality, then enter that scene. In other words, enter that version of yourself. Be enveloped by your desire. Be surrounded by your answer. This is what she, she did. And so, and then finally just rest in that fulfillment. Once you've entered the scene, once you've, once you've felt that conviction, right? Then rest in the fulfillment and conviction of your new reality. Don't look out there for the evidence. This is what she was always doing, glancing at her phone, looking for the evidence, right? We, she stopped looking, she stopped looking at her phone. The kingdom of God does not come with observation or they will say, see here or see there. And it, nor will they say, <laughs> nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. That's what Jesus was saying. The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. You're not out there looking for it. It's within. This is really what she felt, right? Again, it's not a, a temporary 3D feeling. She's feeling that conviction that that scene was done, right? Remember, she moved to that pure I amness, that pure state right, if I am just that. And she just let the thoughts and feelings of doubt and, and, and linear time and the horizontal and linear thoughts of doubt or fear or, any, or, or unwanted or negative thoughts just be there. She didn't do anything with them, right? She just allowed them as she just continued to sort of persist in that I am in that state of grace, right? Then she, she received and, and, and created the imaginal scene right? Just a lot. Did no effort involved. Just seeing herself happy, seeing herself experiencing that fulfillment, right? She saw herself with him, but it was mainly focused on her feeling the fulfillment of being in that desired state. Then she entered the scene. Then she entered that version of herself. She moved into that version, feeling the reality of it. And then she just let it go. She dropped the scene, Right? She didn't hold the thought of it all the time. If the thought came up, fine. She wasn't resisting it or desiring it. She was just letting it be. Do you see that? She, let the, she, she knew that, that she moved to that conviction that that's a reality. Right? And then she just said this, I felt so peaceful and filled with love and gratitude. I see that, I see that now, how the manifestation becomes uh, almost not important. Almost not important, she says, right? He could he couldn't resist I am. So he called, right? And 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 I think it was what she said is it it was a few days. I almost a week, she said, of really just feeling this, really just feeling this. And, and sometimes she would imagine the scene, sometimes she wouldn't. But she did which wasn't holding on to it, wasn't grasping it, wasn't setting any any specific requirements, whether she needed to imagine it or not. She did not create a routine around this. This is what we talked about, right? Because she had a routine before of imagining this getting text. She dropped all that and just felt the fulfillment. And if the scene was there, the scene was there. If it wasn't, it wasn't. She wasn't holding on to anything. I want to really hit that. I see that now, how the manifestation becomes almost, uh, almost not important. He, he couldn't resist I am. Now, keep in mind, that she said during this that she felt some doubt, 
That, that, that doubt was there and she felt it right within. So remember, it's not about getting rid of doubt and get rid of fear. It's a letting it be there. And I'm going to talk about this in a membership video today because this is a big video on a client that, that actually said, Tom, it was messy. It wasn't perfect. In fact, before she had her big manifestation, which I'm going to talk about in the next video, that's for the membership channel, that she said she was sobbing sobbing and in a state that she thought, I, I can't, no way I'm going to manifest anything from this state. She allowed that and then moved into that now moment. We'll talk about that more in the next video, but keep in mind, it's never, it, it, it's not supposed to be perfect. 3D reality is the imperfection that we're supposed to experience. Remember, it's that it's supposed to be allowing that partial seeing to be there as you move into that desired end, as you broaden your perception of the reality that you desire, right? And then, um, you know, she said he couldn't, and she joked, he couldn't resist I am. Who can resist I am? Who could resist God? Who can resist love and gratitude? Who can resist infinity? Who can resist all power? Really, with her just in a state of I am, in a state of gratitude and love, she, it, it, the, the, um, the imaginal scene almost becomes not necessary, right? But it is a way to direct it. It is a way to feel that it's done. It is a way to call forth and announce your reality. And that's what she did. So all that time I held on to the thought of a text in the future. This is meaning all the time that she was trying to, tech, uh, trying to manifest contact with him in the months before the months leading up to us talking about this, right? He called within hours of moving into the scene and then being indifferent to the conditions. Now she said that, but she meant hours of the, of the, of the day that she, it, it was actually several days, uh, maybe almost seven days, she said, almost seven, almost a week. But, it, but when she was on that specific day, the day be, before he called, she had just moved it. She had just moved into that scene in that, in that I amness and feeling that gratitude, right? Her meditation that again, she wasn't planning. It was just, it was just whenever she felt like it, she was lighting up that frame. Do you see it guys? There's no, there's, she went, there, there's no plan to follow here. There's some pillars to, uh, to embody, but, but everyone is different. And this was her way of connecting to that desired reality, to make it real within her, right? He found, and here's the thing. So remember I said at the beginning, and she, she had said that she gave him a card. They were very, there, there was, there's amazing chemistry with these two, and it's still there, right? It never went away, right? He found the card her number was written on, and then he just decided to call her. He had the same reservations. <laughs> Here, he had the same reservations that, that you know, I, I, I shouldn't have let her go. I, all of that came out in their phone call, right? That, that he was thinking the same thing and he wasn't sure if, she, if, if he should call her or, or talk to her. So he didn't, he never called her. But then it, it wasn't, it, it was only when they, he found the card, he goes, you know what, I'm just going to call her. And he called her and then he called her. It wasn't a text. And she remembered making a big deal of it, right, when they first met. Don't lose it or you lose me. Don't lose that card, right? But really, what does it really mean? Don't lose your I am, right? Well, hold on to that I am. Hold on to that grace. Hold on to that state of grace, that gratitude. That's the only thing you, you need to ever hold on to. Because really, that's what, that's what really created this, this reality and realization for her right? It was really moving into that. We showed you sort of a process behind it. And, what, and now we're talking about other things that she wants. Um, more money, uh, something with her, a, a promotion at work and other things that we're working on. But this is big. This is really about manifesting anything now. This is not a drill. What do we mean when we say manifest anything now? Don't put it in the future, right? We're always putting that manifestation in the future by, by thinking of it as a future occurrence, as a future manifestation. When you create it, it is manifested on some level of reality right now, right? So, so it is manifested. It is real and just as real, if not more real than the 3D reality you're living. And the key is to persist in that end, to, fit, to, to feel that conviction that it's already done. That's what she did, right? And then held on to nothing else. Just that idea that that's a reality. Right. And in, and, in, and in terms of how often don't get into that, don't get into that, um, that 
uh, goose chase of how often should I, how long should I uh, imagine it, how often should I manifest it. That's all focusing on linear time in the horizontal experience. Just whatever, whatever feels natural to you. This is what she did. This was important as part of our discussions. It was whatever felt natural to her, right? We didn't even get into how many times she imagined or anything like that. It all happened so fast, right? Within hours of that scene, but, that, but she was imagining it over that seven days. She was just in and out of that scene, in and, in, in and out of that scene, but all, always in the conviction, hear this, in and out of the imaginal scene, right? The actual process but always persisting in the conviction, hear this, that it's a reality now. Whew, that's big. Manifest anything now, this is not a drill. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for uh, being a part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. You can find us there at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. Thank you for following us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen and for joining our membership channel. Big video coming out later today on the membership channel that's going to talk about this idea that it's messy sometimes. It's not perfect. This is the words of, 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 my, of this subscriber. This is not a client. This is a subscriber, a longtime subscriber. Years, she said, right? That really embodied the ideas, but said it wasn't messy. She was sobbing just before her manifestation. This shows you, remember, we've talked about Jesus wept, the, the shortest verse in, in the Bible, right? So it, so it doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean it changes who you are, that I am this. And just reach us out to us anytime on our website at tomcaron.com or be something wonderful.com. There's a link below for the membership channel. If you're not a member, if you want to become a member, join us. This is Tom Karen with the Be Something Wonderful Studio of Higher Consciousness. With great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude, creators, we'll see you soon.